in this lesson we will see where, when and how a traveller who needs a visa has to submit his application. Let's recall that visa strictly depends on the immigration law of your host country and therefore a universal procedure does not exist. However, we can identify some recurring features. Let's start from the where and when. The consulate representing your host country in your home country is the authority that can issue your visa. In the case you are currently living in a country that is not your country of origin, then you must check whether you have to refer to the consulate based in your home country or if the consulate based in your country of residence can take over the responsibility. If you expect to receive the visa according to your travel schedule, you will have to start the procedure in due time. That's why, once you know about your academic travel, one of the first things to do is to check the visa procedures. In a framework of negligence, in fact, consulates are not obliged to respect your timetable. Usually, consulates notify the indicative time needed. For example, the South African consulate based in Milan, Italy, up to the year 2017 indicates that the process to issue a study visa may take up to eight weeks, starting from the date the applicant has submitted a complete application. There is the possibility instead to submit a urgent application if your trip has the characteristics of emergency. For example, in the case of a business trip, you have been charged within a short notice. In these cases, a letter issued by your home or your host institution justify the emergency may be required. Let's now focus on how to submit your visa application. A visa application usually consists in a form to be filled in, plus a series of documents to be attached. The form requires for your personal and travel data. Some forms may also include questionnaires about your health conditions, your religion and your intentions to violate the law during your stay. Regarding the attachments required, the following are the ones you will normally find in the list provided by the consulates for academic travels. A valid passport with a minimum residual duration that varies from country to country and with a minimum number of empty pages, normally at least two. Your flight reservation, a health travel insurance covering the period of stay, your accommodation booking, the proof you have sufficient financial resources to cover your stay, an invitation letter from your host institution. Then there are some countries that ask for more documents, for example, medical certificates or exams about your health status, certificate of vaccinations when they are mandatory. For instance, the yellow fever vaccination is the most common required to travel in Africa or in Latin and Central America. Police clearance documents certifying you are not currently involved in any trial, neither you have been committed in the past for any crime. As you can see, the list may be pretty long and some documents require time to be issued, so it is important to get yourself informed the sooner the possible. A visa application can be, for some countries, sent online or by post, for others, you will have to go physically at the consulate to have an interview or leave your fingerprint. As an example, an Italian professor going for a short trip visit in Mozambique will send by register post his visa application to the Mozambique consulate in Rome. The same professor going for the same purpose to Angola will have to take an appointment and go physically at the Angolan consulate in Rome to submit his visa application. In the first example, under certain conditions, the professor will not need any vaccination. On the contrary, in the second case, he will have to submit his yellow fever vaccination certificate because Angola always requires for it. To conclude, Apply for a visa may require time, some trips to reach the consulates and many documents. Therefore, being informed and ready at the most appropriate time is crucial in order to avoid any delay and stress. 
The two actors that can guide you are the consulates based in your country of origin and your prospective host institution. You should never start a visa procedure before having got in contact with both of them and having received complete information and documentation for your specific type of travel. Your home institution is also, of course, a useful contact point that can support you as an intermediary in case of problems. As a final remark, there are countries you can enter without any visa, but where you may be required to do a registration directly at the competent immigration authorities once arrived. Normally, these are the police stations of your hosting town. In these cases, you should not underestimate the process. It may be possible, in fact, that you should submit documents to be issued in your home country before your departure. So, always remember to get properly informed before your departure.